Today's topic is going to be one of those topics. Going to create a little bit of discussion, and inshallah, that is the goal. You know, I have a number of friends of mine, they ask me, yeah, I said, why do you go to these topics that nobody else does? And I say, because I don't like the hypocrisy and double standards. This is a reality that we are facing, and it needs to be discussed head on. Whether you agree, don't agree, let's begin a discussion. What is this topic I'm talking about? It is the topic of the current climate today and the next few days and the next few days and that is FIFA FIFA. <laughs> there's so much discussion going on within our Muslim circles and youth have come to me I'm not exaggerating youth have come to me and asked me specific issues and questions they've read things they've seen things so let's have a very frank discussion. If I'm right, alhamdulillah, if I'm wrong, let's have a discussion and we will correct inshallah ta'ala each other. Today's discussion will center around three points. And again, the goal, brothers and sisters, is to remove from the minds of our youth this sense that our religion is disconnected from reality. To make them feel a sense of comfort, to remove from them the technical term is cognitive dissonance. They need to feel comfortable in their own skins and to feel pride in who they are. Now, I'm going to discuss three points. There's much more to be discussed, but time is limited. The first point, young man came to me, said, Sheikh, I've read fatwas and seen reputable scholars say that playing these sports and watching them is haram. And he quoted me a number of famous people. Just out of respect, I will not name them because some people are so sensitive. If I say the name, you might think I'm trying to criticize. No, it is what it is. You can Google, you will find these fatwas. Reputable scholars, right? So there are a number of ulama, they say that. Some of them even said playing is haram. And actually quite a number said watching is haram. They use the word haram. Now I'm not going to mention by name, but uh, last decade or two decades ago, a very famous scholar wrote an entire treatise about football. It's called, you know, a Qurat al-Qadam, an entire treatise, and he concluded that it is haram. These are senior scholars of various movies, more than one, by the way. So this isn't just one strand of Islam, multiple strands and interpretations. You know, in, you know, Bilad al-Arab, in our lands of Pakistan, multiple strands. You get my point here. Now, to summarize their contentions, they bring three points. The first point, they say, it's a waste of time. And the second point, they say, is that there's always haram around it. You know, music and inappropriate women and whatnot and alcohol. And the third point they say, it's causing division within the ummah on arbitrary lines. In the same country, multiple, you know, uh, 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 nadis or clubs are competing with one another. Or even within the ummah, you have multiple Muslim countries. And so they're dividing along ethnic lines and this is haram. And they have other points, but these are the three main ones. To respond to this, the first point, the notion that watching football is a waste of time one can say that there's an element of truth in that you should live more productive lives i'm not going to deny this however the technical question that needs to be pushed back when does wasting time become sinful in the eyes of allah that's the technical question by the way for the record i'm not bragging or boasting this is my fitra i'm speaking to you having not watched a single game since the beginning of this entire season Literally, but that's because of who I am, not because of any fiqhi rulings. I just don't have an interest in this and I don't sit down and watch sport, any sports. It's not my habit. I haven't watched a lot. I don't even remember the last time. I'm not, when I say this, I'm not personally bringing in my team, quote unquote, in the fiqh. No, on the contrary, I'm trying to defend a team I don't play for. You get my pun intended here, right? I don't watch sports because I don't like to. But to say that it is haram is a big thing. So the first point that they bring, it is a waste of time. Jayid. When does wasting time become sinful in the eyes of Allah? If they are fair and honest, they will have to say, when this person leaves the wajibat or falls into muharramat. This is the technical thing then. If a person is supposed to pray, instead of praying, he's wasting time. It's a sin. Otherwise, the max you can say about wasting time, you should not do it. You cannot use the word haram or else. Every single minute that we don't do something productive, whether for the deen or the dunya, it can be called haram. And who amongst us can get to that level? So if you define wasting time to be haram as leaving wajibat or doing muharramat, so then we say, if you want to watch sports, you must make sure you stop for the salawah. 
You must make sure that you are not participating in haram. You must make sure that watching sports does not take away from what is obligatory, like earning a livelihood. If you are not working a job and you're a young man and you're supposed to take care of your family and you're watching and playing games all the time, then yes, you might say you have now exceeded the limit of wasting time fallen into haram. But to intersperse your daily routine with a little bit of watching of the football or whatnot, this cannot be considered a wasting time to the level of haram. This is the first point. And by the way, you will find even amongst the classical ulama, some amongst them who understood these types of playing things that we do, it's human nature. Imam al-Shafi'i in particular was very soft on this issue. It's well known. Go read his treatises and books. And Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, the student of Abu Huraira, Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib was asked about playing you know, board games, you know, and he goes, as long as there's no gambling involved, then there is no sin in it. The Sa'id al-Nus, as long as there's no gambling involved, there's no sin in it. And the Mufti of Nishapur of the third century, his name was Sahil ibn Suhaid, uh, the Mufti of Nishapur, uh, he was the Grand Mufti of the city of, of Nishapur in, in Iran, of course, back then it was Sunni. Uh, he said, he was asked about playing games, and he gave a poetic response, I'll say it in Arabic. إِذَا سَلِبَ الْمَالُ مِنَ الْخُسْرَانِ as long as money is not lost and salah is not forgotten, then these types of playing and merriment will bring about friendships between good people. So we have within our... Now, you want to find other opinions? Believe me, you will find also those opinions. Yes, I'm not denying that they exist. But I'm also saying from the beginning of time, we find amongst the Sahaba, Tabi'un, Taba Tabi'un. We find amongst the great Imams, we find amongst the great Fuqaha and Qudat, those who gave some conditions. As long as you're not missing the Salah, as long as you're not gambling, etc., etc. So there is, from the earliest of times, some concession given by our great giants. This is the first issue. The second issue, they say, is that there's always haram with it. There's going to be indecent exposure of awrat of women. There's going to be khamar and alcohol. There's going to be, you know, music and dancing, etc. Again, these are valid points. We don't want to be associated with these sins. But the response to this is, is it necessary every time you watch a match that you are involved in these sins? What if, if that were to come on the screen, you lower your gaze? What if you do not participate in the parties where there's khamar and alcohol? So once again, to make watching the sport haram based upon secondary issues that are not always present, this is a bit of a stretch. We say, if you're going to watch, make sure if something inappropriate comes, you and your family lower the gaze. You should not be watching something like that on the screen. If there's an environment where there's khamar being served, why should you be in that environment? So once again, we can avoid the haram by taking reasonable precautions. And the third point they bring is that Sports causes division amongst the ummah, breaking up people into arbitrary boundaries. Even within one country, you'll have different clubs or even the various countries of the ummah. What if two Muslim countries are fighting? Not fighting, what is it called? Matching, whatever. Scoring against one another, playing one another, right? Uh, what, what is going to happen now? You're going to divide the ummah. And the response is, once again, you are taking a kernel of truth and making it a much bigger deal than it necessarily is. Is every single division haram? Or is the division that leads to disunity haram? Is every single division haram? Clearly not. Tribalism is neutral. If you affiliate to your tribe without it being more important than the ummah, it is halal. Imam al-Shafi'i famously remarked, ليس من العصبية أن يحب الرجل قومه It is not nationalism, it is not factionalism if a person loves his own qawm. The asabiya is when you look down at other people. So we say to this third point, you have raised a valid potential problem that if the ummah is divided in this way, and by the way, you're worried about basketball and soccer teams, the ummah is divided into 50 plus nation states. That's a far bigger issue than the basketball and football and soccer teams over there. And even that they are divided into nation states, as I've spoken about before, in and of itself, it might not be positive, but it doesn't have to be negative. If all of the nation states cooperate upon good and taqwa, in and of itself, it is not negative. And in our days, by the way, most of us, myself included, we don't have tribes. Tribalism is almost gone. 
and the re closest replacement is the nation state. There is a type of affinity we feel to our nation state, and that affinity, if it remains within the hudud of the Sharia, it is halal and permissible. And if it is leading to sectarianism, to division, then it becomes haram. The bottom line for these three points that are raised, and this is point number one out of three, so don't get confused, is one A, B, and C, now we move on to point two. The bottom line, if one takes a conscientious effort to avoid the haram surrounding the games, and make sure that watching these games do not interfere with the salah, with that which is wajib, then it is very difficult to make the verdict that watching a sports is haram. However, if you want to be technical, you can say, yes, the wise person benefits from his time to the maximum. Yes, you can say this. And there's no question about this. The wise person is judicious. Time is limited. And no doubt, you know, two, three, four, five hours, you know, is a lot of time a day. But to say it's haram is a big word. Max that can be said, you know, it's better to invest in something, you know, better than this. But in the end, we're all different levels. Therefore, to conclude point number one of the fatwa being haram, with utmost gentleness and love and respect, and I know this is going to cause irritation among some, but I stand by what I say, and if you disagree, please come and talk to me. When a fatwa that is given by a senior scholar, a respected scholar, is neglected by 99% of the ummah, as is the case in this fatwa here. Let's be brutally honest here. Which nation is even partially following this fatwa? Which strand of Islam with utmost love, I say, even the strands that the fatwa comes from, their own scholars and the children of those scholars watch these sports. You're telling me that people don't watch soccer in the Arab lands, in the Desi land, they don't watch it? Come on, let's get real here, right? Let's get practical here. And I say bluntly, if a fatwa falls on deaf ears to 99% of the ummah, then something is not adding up with utmost love and respect. So I politely disagree with this fatwa. And I say, rather than just say haram, 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 put reasonable conditions that people can strive to, and you will understand that therefore it will become much more meaningful. This is the first point. In my humble opinion, watching sports is not haram if these conditions are met. The second point that we see about FIFA and what's going on is once again this controversy, the cynicism that is being displayed over the way that the event has been conducted. The cynics say, the critics say, all of this billions is being spent for a nation state and for a sports. What if these billions were spent for Palestine? What if these billions were spent to feed the hungry? In fact, I have even read online, so many people are criticizing the da'wah efforts being done in that country. Billboards everywhere, inviting famous preachers to, you know, talk to the crowds. People want to criticize everything. So many people of knowledge, if they were ignorant, I wouldn't say anything. But people who are supposed to know better, online they're posting very cynical put-downs. Oh, this is all a show. This is all for show-off. All of this is a waste of money. Now, again... Technically, they're right. I wish all of these billions were to be spent to feed the poor. I wish. But there's a difference between idealism and between reality. Whether you like it or not, some country is going to host this game. Whether you appreciate it or not, some land is going to be spending billions and doing all of this. So if a Muslim land does it and actually raises the bar for da'wah, and for the first time, a verse of Quran is recited on the main stage. And for the first time, alcohol is banned. And for the first time, crowds are not going wild and crazy. Women are actually saying, we feel safe coming to this audience, to this land, right? For the first time, we see some positives. Then do you have to be cynical to every single thing that you see? Can't you just allow some positives wallahi i think it is a problem when anything that happens you have to find faults with it i think it is a problem i am not saying that it is good to spend all this money you know on a sports instead of the fuqara but i'm saying i don't get to decide it's being done so the way that it's being done is better than the way it's being done anywhere else at least we can agree to this right so rather than concentrate on the negatives i say look at the positives and you know what we also have to point out here how can you ignore the sheer hatred and hypocrisy of Islamophobes around the world when they're criticizing 
what's happening. They're criticizing no alcohol. They're criticizing this country for human rights. And they ignore the human rights of every other country that hosted FIFA. And they're ignoring so many other problems of the country. And this one, all of a sudden, they're making a big deal. You and I both know they're only doing this out of a hatred of Islam. Now, again, let me be blunt here. O oh, cynics, O oh, people who find fault with this, if you are so blinded in your rage that you cannot see that actual enemies of Islam are hating on what's happening because they hate Islam, and you would rather side with them to criticize, then wallahi, I think you have a blindness of the heart that you're not really seeing what is going on here. When all of these superpowers and news medias, famous news medias, are refusing to broadcast out of a sense of, oh, we're standing with, you know, this community and the under community and whatnot. SubhanAllah, you know it's fake and you know it's hypocrisy. Now is the time that sides are being drawn here. Whether you like it or not, there are people who hate the Sharia and they're on one side. It doesn't make sense for you to be on the same side as well. So I say to these cynics, open your eyes. And understand, we don't live in an ideal world. Of course, we both agree. If billions were spent on the fuqara and masakeen, it'd be more useful to mankind. But I'm not the one spending. And by the way, again, with utmost respect, gently pushing back, you're criticizing a country that has trillions of dollars for spending that. Have you in your own life cut back every single israf that you do, every single luxury that you do, and spent it on the fuqara? I mean, Fair enough, you criticize them. Have you demonstrated in your own life every luxury you have gotten rid of? Well, then if you haven't, you know, then understand, not everybody's ideal. And to have some khair and good is better than none. So that's my second point of this, that I am not a cynic. I understand the perspective of the cynics, but I like to see the good. And the final point, inshallah ta'ala, and by the way, again, before we move on, so the irony of the second point again, and we see this across, I'm seeing so much positive coverage, neutral journalists and neutral media people and women and children and families are praising, we have never attended a football match more, you know, uh, respectable and more safe than this one. Isn't this a positive PR for the Sharia and for, for the implementation of the Sharia? There was an article in The Guardian that said the positives of not having alcohol. Can you believe that a mainstream newspaper is actually saying there's a positive here? So look at the good rather than concentrate on the bad. The final point, a little bit relevant for today, and that is, should we feel happy when a Muslim country wins? Once again, you have the cynics. Wallahi, well, I would not say this to you if I, haven't, if I haven't known people of knowledge in the Western world posting on social media. Perhaps some of you haven't read these things, good for you. But our youth are reading them. These are the dramas of social media, which is a different bubble than the real world. In the real world, 99.9% .9 of the ummah is celebrating today for a small sports victory. Even I posted a little bit of a joke on my Facebook and Twitter, okay? It is what it is. Online, there's a different set of people. They're not popular in the real world. They're only popular online. And they cause drama online. Online, we have certain people saying, like basically making Muslims feel guilty. Oh, once upon a time, we had Qadisiyah and Yarmouk. And now you guys are rejoicing over grown men in shorts kicking a ball into a field or whatever. However they phrase it that way, okay? Qadisi and Yarmouk versus kicking a ball on a field. Do they have a point of validity? Once again, perhaps they have a small kernel of truth. From where to where? This isn't Qadisiya. This isn't Yarmouk. This isn't Fatih Makkah. This isn't the battle of Hittin with Salahdin al Ayyubi. But guys, we haven't had a source of Izza in many fields for a long time. Please, O oh cynics and critics, don't guilt our youth for feeling happy over something that is neutral. Don't bring in the religion to make somebody feel guilty for something that is overall halal and mubah. And in fact, I say more than this. Sometimes, in some cases, it's more than mubah. There's nothing wrong with feeling a sense of pride in another Muslim land. Nothing wrong. Especially when the dynamics is a colonizer versus colonizer, as I posted today. When the dynamics is expulsion versus those that were expelled, there should be an element of, ah, look, no problem. Why do you have to guilt people for something that is so neutral? And again, you want to bring evidence for this? SubhanAllah. In the time of Makkah, in the time frame of Makkah before the Hijrah, I, men I mentioned this episode multiple times. The Muslims were being persecuted by the Quraysh. 
in a land close by, the Byzantines were fighting the Sassanids. Now the Byzantines and the Sassanids have no direct relationship with the Muslims and the Quraysh. But it's human nature that you form alliances and loyalties. It's human nature that you form a, t a team aside. And the Quraysh felt affinity to the Sassanids, the Persians, because they're fire worshippers. And the Muslims felt affinity with the Byzantines because the Ahli Kitab believe in the God of Abraham and Moses. And the Quraysh and Muslims were debating who's going to win that war. And there's this sense, like we all know, that sense of tension, positive tension, negative tension, and the, the, uh, the, 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 the Sassanids won over the Byzantines. The Muslims felt a little bit deflated. The Muslims felt a little bit sad because the Sassanids weren't. Allah revealed in the Quran, Alif Lam Mim, Ghulibat al Rum, right? Allah revealed Quran, and then Allah said to them, Don't worry, in a few years, you shall be happy with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Basically, Allah cheered them up, literally. Don't worry, in a few years, something's going to happen, the Battle of Badr, that will make you happy. And on the same day, the Byzantines will also win over the Persians. That's exactly what happened. The Battle of Badr took place in, uh, uh, in Medina, in Badr. And up north, the Byzantines countered and won on the same day as the Sassanids. Allah predicted this. And Allah revealed the Quran to console the believers. It's human nature. What's the big deal in this regard? So, bottom line, conclude with this hadith, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, this hadith is mind-boggling. Hadith in Imam al-Bukhari's book, Al-Adab al-Mufrad. Imam al-Bukhari narrated this hadith in his book, Adab al-Mufrad. It's a really mind-boggling hadith. Listen to this. One day, the Prophet ﷺ came amongst the Sahaba in the Masjid al Nabi, and they were laughing and talking with one another. Yatahaddathun wa yatadahakun. Yani telling jokes and laughing, basically having a social gathering. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I swear by him in whose hands is my soul, if you know what I know, you would laugh little and cry a lot. Then, he went away. And the people began feeling sad and crying. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel to Muhammad and gave him wahi. Listen to this. Ya Muhammad, lima tuqnitu ibadi? O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa why are you creating despair in my servants? This is a hadith in Imam al-Bukhari's book, Al-Adab al-Mufrad. Very amazing hadith. The Prophet sees the Sahaba, they're laughing, joking, and the Prophet feels a genuine, we understand this, we understand. Come on, do something, you can't just do, you know, save yourself from Jahannam. And flipped, they began crying, they began feeling very guilty. Allah revealed to the Prophet why are you bringing despair in my servants? Lima tuqnitu ibadi. So then he went back to them. And he changed the tone and he said, Abshiru wa saddidu wa qaribu. Be happy, give glad tidings, and do your best and come together. Basically, he flipped the script and changed the tone. And this hadith demonstrates between these two tones, both are Islamic, but the one of them is more necessary than the other. That what the Prophet did is not wrong in the first time. But Allah is saying, why are you taking this ultra strict route? You're gonna bring despair in the qawm. You're gonna make people lose hope. They're not gonna, they're not gonna feel happy about my rahmah and mercy. Give them glad tidings. And that's why this hadith was early in Medina. That's why later a hadith, a very different tone. Yassiru wa la tu'assiru, bashiru wa la tunafiru. Make things easy. Don't make things difficult. So on and so forth. So bottom line, brothers and sisters, to be very technical, very technical, there is no doubt that the believer who has a limited time will maximize the productivity of their time. But for a person of knowledge and a person of ilm to make a generic thing completely haram and make the average Muslim feel sinful for what the entire globe does, I don't think this is the right way forward. Rather, we put the conditions. We say, if you want to do this, make sure you are praying. Make sure your gatherings don't have haram. Make sure you pause when it is time for salah. Make sure no haram is done. And make sure you prioritize other things. And then as long as the other sins, for example, nationalism, one, don't become out of hand. As long as you keep them in check, it doesn't lead to sectarianism. And as long as you understand, to be very true, a win of a soccer game is not going to be the win of the ummah. But you know what? It's better than nothing. 
It's not wrong to feel happy. It's okay. But yes, don't equate it to the battle of Badr. I agree with you. Yes, okay. Don't say this is khalas fatih Makkah happening. No. But subhanallah, how can you not be happy when the flag of Palestine is raised and Palestine is mentioned on the pitch in front of a billion people? How can you be so narrow-minded that you don't see the benefit and khair in this? So look at the good. Make the religion easy for people. Give glad tidings. And this is the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zakumullahu khair. فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا الرب تعود إلى رضا الرب